In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your sway bar with the links, the bushings, and the bracket that holds all of these together on this Toyota Corolla. Let's get started. Let's remove the wheel, 21 millimeter socket, remove all five of your lug nuts, and then pull the wheel off. Take the wheel off. Let's remove the sway bar link mounting bolt that attaches it to the strut. 17 millimeter in size. Now it might not come off directly, but I will give it a try. If not, then we'll just put some locking pliers on the backside and hold it. So it looks like the whole stud is spinning, just like I thought. I put locking pliers on the backside, holding the stud, as you can see. All right, looks like it worked. Let's release the locking pliers. Pull the sway bar link out. Now with that sway bar link off, follow the sway bar and you'll see this bracket that sits right on the subframe and it's held on with two 12 millimeter bolts. This is one of them. The other one is on the back side, which we'll get to in a minute, but let's take this one out first. I'll put a 12 millimeter socket on here. I sprayed it with rust penetrant. Hopefully that will help remove this. There we go. This one wasn't very tight. Sometimes they're very tight and you'll have to work them back and forth and keep spraying them. And uh, I've even had them sometimes where they break, which is not great. Fixable, but not great. So hopefully yours goes smoothly. Go ahead and remove this all the way and then we'll move to the rear one. There it is. And if you look from underneath the car, you can see the rear bolt right there at the top of the subframe. It's hard to see, especially on camera. You can see it better in person, but there it is right there. Let's break it free and take it out of there. You gotta make sure that socket is really seated on there. You don't wanna strip anything out because that would cause a lot more work. Okay. <clears throat> I can feel that it's getting a little tighter, so I'm gonna bring it back and uh, I'm gonna spray some more rust penetrant. I'll show you exactly where. If you look at the subframe, it'll have some access holes down here. If you just peek through, uh, it's not gonna be very close because the bolt is here, the access hole is here, but you can stick some rust penetrant in there with a straw and spray down the bolt that pokes through the other side. I'm gonna stick a flashlight in here so I can see what's happening. Okay, all right, let's go back out with it. Let's work that rust penetrant into the threads. Okay, there we go. So now the bracket is out on this side. Now move over to the other side and do the same thing. Take the wheel off, disconnect the sway bar link and the bracket. At this point, we actually have to lower this subframe because the sway bar needs to slide out through the sides of it right here and here. And in order to do that, we have to unbolt the rear engine mount, the front engine mount, and this cross member here. Let's start with this rear engine mount. You have two nuts through these access holes, one nut over here, and one bolt over here. They're all 14 millimeter in size. For this front mount, we have two bolts through these access holes. These are also 14 millimeter. To disconnect this cross member from the main subframe, we have to take out these two 14 millimeter bolts. And in the front, we have two more 14 millimeter bolts holding this cross member onto the lower radiator sport. There's one. And two. Now let's tie off the steering wheel. I like to use the seat belt because it's already there. Make sure your wheels are centered and the steering wheel is straight. Loop the belt around the steering wheel twice, that way it's nice and secure, and buckle it in to lock it. Now let's pop the boot off of the steering column so we can expose the pinch bolt. But before we unbolt it, let's mark the steering column, the shaft of the steering rack, and the rack itself so you can have a reference for when you reinstall. And finally, with a 12 millimeter on a swivel and a long extension, break that bolt loose and remove it all the way.
Now, as you can see here, I'm trying to pry the steering shaft off the rack, but it's not going to work because it's not going to compress inside the vehicle unless you disconnect it there, which I'm not going to do because I don't want a second point to line up. So let's slightly lower the subframe and disconnect it that way. To unbolt this subframe, there are four main 19 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right here, which we have to go through the control arm to get, and the same thing on the other side. That's it, just four bolts, don't touch these, which might look the same, but they're actually for the rear bushing of the control arm. You don't have to touch those. So one, two, three, four, and that's it. However, you have to support it, otherwise it'll just fall down, and that's not what we're going for. I'm using a transmission jack with this attachment that has the four pads on it, but if you're on the ground, you can very easily do this with a jack, two jacks, or some jack stands, or anything that you have that will control the lowering of this subframe. We're not going very far, we're just loosening it up and slightly tilting it backwards. We're not actually removing it. Doesn't matter where you start, they're all 19 millimeter in size. I'm gonna start over here. Okay, there's two. This one's in pretty poor condition, so I will be replacing this one. As you can see, the shank of the bolt is very worn out, and, and for a subframe bolt, this is not acceptable, at least not by my standards, so this is going to be replaced. All right, on the other side, there's this one. It's in pretty poor condition. Both of these are going to get replaced, and the one through the control arm. This one looks good, just like the other one in the front. So these are good. These rear ones are gonna need to be replaced. Keep in mind, when you are replacing bolts, especially very important ones like this, you wanna get them from the manufacturer because these four bolts is all that's holding your whole lower suspension together, your steering, everything. Basically, you don't wanna lose any of these. Get them from the manufacturer, make sure they're good quality. Let's slowly lower this down. And now with the subframe lowered just a little bit, let's try again. Use a pry bar, and once you find the right angle to pry from, the shaft should pop right off the rack. Perfect. This is about all we need. On the steering rack right here, with it disconnected, you'll see that there's a green mark here and a green mark on this notch. This is where the boot was clipped onto. And whether this is from the factory or someone else has been here before, this mark tells me that the rack is centered when these line up. Because that means for me, if I line up green with green and red with red, I know I'm centered. But if you don't have marks like these, of course you're gonna need an alignment after this anyway, so if you're one tooth off, it's gonna be okay. But preferably, you should be uh, lined up. Grab the sway bar, push it one way. Get the sway bar past those tie rods. And there we go. Just wiggle it until you find the right angle for this to come out. Once it's out on the driver's side, which is going to be a little bit easier than the passenger side, because on the passenger side we have a couple power steering lines in the way. Now on this side, you're going to have to twist it and turn it to clear this power steering hose and line that runs down here. There we go, with the sway bar link still attached, totally doable. Of course it'll be easier to install because we won't have the sway bar links attached, but there it is. There's the sway bar, it comes off with the brackets and the bushings, which of course we are replacing. There it is. Now you can grab the sway bar, the new one, slide it in, make sure you go in on the passenger side first where it's going to swoop around that power steering line, and then it up and over and there you have it make sure it goes over the tie rods so over here make sure it goes around this power steering line and on both sides make sure it goes over the tie rods it's going to be a lot easier to put the sway bar links in on the sway bar side right now so grab them slide them through make sure they aim in the general direction of where they're supposed to go put the nut on and i'm just going to tighten it now because might as well i'm going to use a wrench and do the best I can, but at this point the stud is spinning, so what I'm going to do is put my wrench on. I'm going to put a six millimeter Allen in the center to hold that stud in place and uh, tighten it this way. 
Okay, that's nice and snug. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side now. Now let's put the bushings and the brackets on. This little notch here needs to be on the inside of the bushing, so the bushing goes right here, and we actually have to separate it from the bracket. That way we can open it up. I like to put silicone paste in here, and I highly recommend it, because as the sway bar moves up and down, if you don't put it in, it's going to just rub dry on the rubber, and it'll wear it out prematurely. Now try not to put too much. Nothing's gonna happen if you put too much. You're just gonna make a mess all over. So put just enough to lubricate it, but not too much to make a mess all over. And now you'll notice that it splits on one side. I recommend putting the split towards the back so that if for some reason debris sneaks in here, well, it can't because it's on the back side and the wind will blow that way as you're driving forward. So slide it over the sway bar, try to open it up and press it down. Ah. All right, set it down on the subframe and I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone paste in here too, not because it's moving, but because it'll actually help us install it. It'll make it slide on a little easier. There we go, nice and easy. Let's do the same on the other side and then we'll come here and bolt it on. I want both of them lined up and ready to go. These brackets are non-directional. It doesn't really matter on which side you put them or in which direction you put them. Make sure your sway bar and your end links are still lined up. They're over the tie rods. They're exactly where they need to be positioned so that we can bolt this down. My original bolts that came out are in good condition, so I'm gonna reuse them. If yours are not, definitely replace them. Make sure they're good quality bolts. I just found the bolt hole right there. I'm gonna try and start this one, at least one or two threads so that it's set in there. I think I got it, yep. Okay, that one started. It's going to attempt to start this one at the front. I have to loosen this one up. I tightened it too much and it pulled the bracket down. And if it does that, it'll actually pull it up in the front. All right, so these are both started. Not gonna tighten them fully yet. I still want this to be able to move around just a little bit. I'll bring this one a little lower, but I want this to move around so I can line up the other side. All right, I got all of them in. I'm just gonna tighten them up now. Not worried about how tight I make them right now because I will come back and torque them. I just want them bottomed out and I want these bushings to completely close. Let's torque them. 14 foot pounds is the torque for this. Let's do the same to the other side. And if for some reason you can't torque them, 14 foot pounds just means make a type by hand, basically. It'll be perfectly fine. It's time to go up with the subframe. As I lift it up, I'm gonna pay attention to the engine mount that it goes in right where it should, that all the studs seat, as well as the steering shaft. I need to make sure that that lines up as I lift it up. able to put the bolt in just a tiny bit so I can hold this boot up and uh, now to line it up I'm just going to try and push the tie rods to spin the steering rack just a tiny bit so that the splines can line up. Looks like when I go up and down like that, it wants to line up. It wants to slide in. I'm gonna take a hammer and gently tap it. So hopefully the vibrations are gonna wanna bring it up into position. Okay, let's 
see if this will go through. You know that the bolt is lined up. If it goes through, I think it just did. So it needs to be lined up with that slot between the splines. Okay, I just saw that seat. All right, it's going in. Let's pull that boot up and finish tightening it. Make sure that boot is out of the way. Oh, it's getting pinched. All right, there we go. Okay, that's tight. In order for me to get a torque wrench in there, I actually have to turn the steering rack, and to do that, we have to go up to unlock the steering wheel. But in order to do that, we actually have to get rid of the support that I have here because we can't lower it like this. So let's bolt the subframe up so we can continue. Doesn't matter where you start. I'm gonna just start right here. Like I said earlier, I have new bolts to install because mine were in poor condition. Move this around until it lines up. And once it does, start it by hand. You definitely do not want these cross-threading. You want these as lined up as possible. Mine is going in nice and smooth, which is perfect. I'm gonna bring it in as much as I can by hand, but I'm not gonna tighten it right here. I'm gonna stop. I still want this to move around because I have three other ones to line up. Move on to the passenger side. Same thing, new bolt, start it by hand. Okay, that's it right there. Not even gonna bottom it out completely. Let's put the two front ones in. I'm gonna put these ones in by hand as well. Perfectly lined up, that's great. I'm gonna get them close. Right there. And let's put the other one in on the other side. These two front bolts get torqued to 83 foot-pounds. That's it right there. And these rear ones get torqued to 116. All right, there we go. And now you could go around and double check them all if you wanted to. Mine are all torqued, so I'm all set. We can move along. Now we can remove the support. And now let's torque the steering shaft bolt to 26 foot-pounds. The boot is kind of in the way here. I turn the steering wheel so that the bolt of the shaft can face towards the wheel well so I can get my socket and extension on here so I can torque it. This is 812 millimeter, 26 foot-pounds. All right, don't over tighten it. You don't want to snap it in there. And at this point, let's put the boot back. To do that, you just have to pull it down and make sure it hooks over those two tabs there. Now I took the other mounting nuts off the old sway bar. You can use new ones if you want to, but mine were just fine. I'm gonna thread them onto the new sway bar link, 17 millimeter socket. Torque for this is 55 foot-pounds if you wanted to torque it. If for some reason you can't, just like I couldn't torque the lower one, just make it nice and tight. Now let's do the same exact thing to the other side. Make sure both upper and lower mounting nuts are tightly secured. Let's install the two bolts that bolt this cross member onto the lower radiator support and then the two engine mount bolts. Everything lines up for me, so I'm gonna thread those in by hand. Now these bolts here are all similar, however, the ones that go in this cross member to the radiator support have the floating washer on them. So keep that in mind because the ones that go onto the engine mount have the floating washer, but the bolt head also has a built-in washer kind of. So keep that in mind, put them back where they came from. I'm not gonna tighten these yet. I wanna tighten these two first, situate this cross member, and then tighten the engine mounts. Now let's torque all of these to 38 foot-pounds. In the rear, let's install the three bolts and three mounting nuts that hold the engine mount and this cross member in place. Doesn't matter where you start. All 
All right, they're all in. Let's snug them up and all of these get torqued to 38 foot-pounds. Now let's put the wheel on. Put back all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and then torque them to 76 foot pounds. And double check them. And there you go, take it for a road test. After finishing this repair, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.